today I'm taking you on another Oregon adventure. We are going to the very closest winery to where I live. When I posted the Lincoln City vlog, several of you commented you can't wait for me to take you to wineries. Well, here you go. You ask, I answer. I'm here to fulfill your every need. Stay tuned. I mean, come on, how Oregon is this? Vineyards right next to all these beautiful pine trees. Spectacular. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here, and... Paul! <laughs> <laughs> if he can get his nose out of the glass, right? Yes. <laughs> welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Sorry about the children screaming in the background. They're running right behind us through the grapevine. Here's where we are today. We're at Oswego Hills Winery, and this is the closest winery to where we live. We live in Lake Oswego, which is just south of Portland, and just south of us is a town called West Lynn, and this is on the southern end of Lake Oswego, close to West Lynn. We first found this place driving by in June when we were looking for apartments in this area. So I wanted to come back. They're only open on the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday from noon to five. And so far we're enjoying the wines and loving the views out here. It's so pretty. And the weather. It's why we're in Oregon. Yes. <laughs> so right across the street from the, uh, from the winery there, there is some farmland. So we're out in farm country. That's how close it is to town. That's how close the farm country is to town is what I mean. The landscape is just so different here and I think we're going to do a video at some point comparing our experience in Oregon with our whole lives in Houston. There are things that are similar but there's a lot that is so different and for the most part we're loving it. I feel like I could do a whole video myself just on the on the differences and the vibe here and the I'm gonna say culture. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Maybe that's too strong of a word, but I don't it, is, think so. it is so different. The pace of life here mm -hmm. is so different from Houston. I mean, uh, again, uh, maybe later we can elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. We are doing some wine tastings. We're just on our second pour right now. You get six tastings off the menu for $15. So what we usually do is he'll do a tasting, I'll do a tasting, and then we share, and then we each get to taste usually all the wines available at, at most places. That's how we do it. So we're working our way through the whites right now. And usually I would film the shots, not the shots, the, <laughs> the ounces, the wine being poured, but it's pretty busy inside. We're here on a Sunday and uh, there are a lot of people here. I just don't want to get in the way and be a bother to people. But For God's sake, just don't get in the way and be a bother. <laughs> Once I get more in the habit of vlogging, I think I'll be more comfortable. Like at Vlogmas, I usually don't have a problem filming wherever because I get used to filming all the time. But right now, I haven't been doing it much and it's a little uncomfortable to pull your camera out. You're out and of practice. Yeah, I am out of, I'm very much out of practice. So, All right, my arm's getting tired from holding the camera, so I'm gonna put it down and let's move on to our next segment. Paul, do you know why there's a rose bush at the end of every row of wine vines, otherwise known as grapevines? When I hear about that, I think about the canary and the uh, gold mine. 
because the canaries uh, are put in there to kind of warn people of the dangerous things that are happening in the in the mine. And I always looked at the, the rose bushes, sort of the same thing. They give a, an advance warning of any problems or diseases or pests or anything that may be about to infect the grapevines. You passed the test. High five. <laughs> We're just sitting here talking. By the way, I have a hat now. Some of you may have noticed. She has so a does hat. he. Yeah. We match. <laughs> we do. Paul was telling me about something he's noticed at a couple of the wineries we've been to up here that's a little different from places we've been in Texas. I was just telling Autumn, you know, it's weird. Uh, there's some wine, we've been to so many wineries, and, and I remember some of them stick out for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And it's when we go to a winery and, they, and we were, we're tasting. And the person behind the counter, it seems as though they're, they're more about telling us how smart they are and how much they know about the wines than about the wines themselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes that kind of puts me off, you know. Yep. So far, you know, we haven't been to a lot of wineries here. I might change my opinion when we do that. But so far, just the, the few wineries we've been to, I haven't felt that. And I don't know, again, I don't know if that's part of this vibe and this culture and this whatever thing of of the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. but, uh, and again, you know, I can be raked over the coals for this, but I, I just get this feeling that everybody's a little bit more laid back and not so much about themselves. Yeah. And, and even to the, even into wine tastings, you know, and, and the guy behind the, or the lady behind the counter. Probably more that I'll say about that later, but. These are just some observations that I'm starting to have as we move up here and live here. Yeah, they're very casual here. We've had this experience twice now where we've done tastings at wineries up here and you don't just stand at the bar to taste your whole flight. They give you a drink and then you go wander and then you come back for your next pour. And that's different from Texas. I don't remember ever doing that. It's back to that thing I said before. It's the whole pace seems to be slower. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just take your time, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're in a hurry. <laughs> I'm never in a hurry. We're about to try a grape that we've never had before. And Paul just went in. I'm holding our seats. And Paul went in and learned about the grape. So he's going to tell us about it. This, uh, this particular wine is called Maréchal Fauche. It's a French grape, and according to the lady uh, behind the counter, it only grows here in a certain microclimate of Oregon where the, the rain and the temperature all combine. And it's one of those, maybe she said it's the only grape that not only is the grape, the, the meat of the grape dark red, but the skin is dark red because she says a lot of red wines, you know, as we know, the grape itself, the meat is is, is white, but mm -hmm. with the skin is dark, and that makes a red wine. Mm -hmm. But she says this is red all the way through, and she had me look through it. She said you can't even see, you can't even look through the wine. Yeah, and you I can. said all I can see is my reflection. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> so thinking. we're gonna try that. Okay, you try it first. Okay, let me uh, stick my proboscis in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. I guess I'm I'm waiting for this really dry, dark red, tannish wine, mm. and I'm not getting that. Your turn. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna say something unflattering, but I I'm gonna preface it by saying I say this about a lot of wines, so it's not specific to this vineyard. It smells like band-aids. <laughs> Have I told you people about my cologne? It's the new cologne. It's called Band-Aids for Men. And this is a petite Syrah. Now they have a Syrah here, but she said this was one of her, the lady behind the counter said this is one of her favorites. It's, it's a petite Syrah. Okay. And she said it's a classic petite Syrah, so we're going to give that a shot here. 
again, proboscis in the wine. I wonder if all the smoke in the air is affecting our tasting. I'm thinking it is, because I, I just, so far, I haven't really gotten anything off the nose of these wines. Anyway, here we go. There have been a lot of wildfires up here, and it's smoky and hazy, and we're outside. I didn't really, I haven't smelled smoke until just now. This is the first wine that I've tasted here, of all the red wines, that's dry. Oh, Petit Syrah? Uh, this this is the first wine that I've tasted that, to my to my palate it's a little bit dry. All the rest of them have, have been sweet or not cl sweet, cl but cloying. <laughs> on the, the sweeter side, for. yeah. I probably probably of all the wines I've tasted today, this may be my favorite, the Petit Syrah. I wouldn't call it dry, but yeah, drier. <laughs> drier than the others. What do you think about the uh, the Marichal Fouche? Tell us what you really feel, Autumn Beckman. Mm -hmm. I, I just did. <laughs> okay. It's all in the eyes, you guys, which is or behind sunglasses. Okay, this may be a little view of some of the smokiness, which I don't know. I guess I'm having trouble distinguishing between just regular mountain haze and smoke because I'm not used to seeing mountains. Apparently, it's smoky. And I just don't recognize that as smoke. Also, here's across the street from the winery, a little better view of some of the farm buildings. Pretty. And there's fall. Can you see us? Yep. It's kind of dark on the screen. So we are now at a brewery and it's because of this behind me this is lake oswego not only do you have to live in lake oswego to have access to the lake and this is just a tiny little bit of it there's another section like this over here somewhere and then there's a much bigger section over there somewhere um, but you have to live in certain places to have access to the water to be able to have a boat on it or swim in it or anything like that. There are some apartment buildings over there and I looked into those when we were looking for apartments but I don't remember why. They probably had just really small square footage and some things that didn't click all the boxes for us. And then over here you can see, um, where's my finger, you can see those buildings and, and the little, tiny marina with the boats. Um, those are also apartments on the top. They are incredibly expensive. Like they start around $5,000 um, for one bedrooms and stuff, way above what we want to pay for anything. And then on the first floor are restaurants and shops and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Just a little pan of the lake. And we wanted to check this out, this place out because my mom is coming to visit next week and she would really like to come here. She loves water, so we wanted to check it out before we bring her. Also, next to those apartments, this building here is a hotel, so you can come and stay there and have a nice water view, and they have a dock in front of the hotel that has a swimming pool, and it's reasonably priced rooms. It's not super expensive, so that's a cool thing to know about. Hello again. Hi, Burp. We just had a meal. <laughs> um, it was lovely. It was <laughs> it was good food. We both had the I forgot to film it, but we had the pulled pork sandwich. It was really good. It, it was. had coleslaw underneath the pork, and then it had two onion rings on top of it. We both took the onion rings off and ate those separately because yep. that's kind of weird. But the coleslaw was really good with it. Um, so definitely want to come here again. They had a pretty damn fine cheesecake too. It was merry and berry. Yeah, we split a piece of cheesecake. That was really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm particular about cheesecake, so is he. He mm -hmm. used to make cheesecakes. That's what we need to do is... <laughs> oh my God, now I've got a grill. Now I've got to make cheesecakes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm, I've got a lot on my plate. I need you to just take over the content on the channel for a while, okay? Oh, sure, okay. And it's time to bid you adieu with the sunset over Lake Oswego. 
thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Ciao.